I don't know you, but empathy is something that not a lot of people have in this world. And you've got it. And I'm pretty sure that whatever you want to accomplish in life, you'll be very successful at. And with that, he basically walks out. I'm standing there going, did I just get a pep talk from John Cena? What is up CrossFitters? In today's video, I am celebrating my 30th birthday. I'm old, Gandalf. That's right. Three decades on this floating marble called Earth. October 4th, 1991, little baby David was brought into the world. And now 30 years later, he's sitting in front of a camera talking to all you fine people. And I love and appreciate every single one of you. Everyone who has liked, commented, shared, or subscribed to my channel. I am super, super appreciative of every single one of you. And I can't wait for the next year and the years to come to keep producing more content for all of you. If there's certain videos or certain styles that you like, please drop them down in the comment section below so I can make more of those videos for you. And that's really what this video is about today. Looking back on my past year, where I'm at right now and where I wanna go. And if you've been with my channel for a while, you know I made a video last year called Here's to 29. I had just moved back to Vancouver from Nova Scotia and I was trying to get my footing back in the city at the job I'm at, the gym that I work at, Equinox. I'm working as a personal trainer there and I still am there trying to build that business. And I wanted to just talk about the things that I had learned leading up to being 29. And now I thought 30 would be a great one to do as well because this is the next decade of life. This is that next chapter, that moment where you realize you kind of have to grow up and move on to bigger and better things, hopefully. What I'm doing right now is my big passion project, YouTube, making these videos, making this content. I would love to be able to get this channel to a point where I could go full time with it and just always being able to bring you guys the content you enjoy. That really is my goal for the next year, two years, three years, is just to develop, hone my skills and get better at this. And I know I've been a little bit more relaxed with my video making because I actually had to pick up another job I started working as a security guard at a strip club here in Vancouver and the time between the gym and the club doesn't give me a lot of leisure time to study or to research or to film and edit my videos. So right now I'm kind of producing what I can. I have stories from there as well. If you're interested in some strip club stories, uh, let me know down in the comment section below and I will make some videos talking about those. Basically today it's looking at 30. It's looking at the next decade or the next path in life and where do I want to go with it? What's happened in that year from 29 to 30? And quite a bit actually has. I've been making my videos. I've had a few that have gotten relatively good viewings and, and likes and comments and stuff. Uh, my Jan Blahovich video, my Yiji Brohaska, some of my UFC videos seem to be doing really well. Uh, my videos where I talk about my application to the police department and how I bombed that and how I sprained my ankle. Uh, a lot of people have been following those. And I want to be able to also keep going, keep talking about different fighters and different athletes that I admire uh, based on their ability to overcome the odds. I'm always a big fan of the underdog, the person that could give up but doesn't and keeps persevering and keeps fighting and keeps struggling to succeed and they weren't necessarily the ones that were expected to win. So I, uh, I like to talk about those situations as well as delving into some more philosophical ideas and content, if that's what you guys like as well. I really enjoy talking about the mind and how we think and maybe creating a different perspective for myself and for you as well. And speaking of that, as I was getting closer or getting closer to 30, I was sitting on the bus reading my book, Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus when I came across a line that really struck me and really kind of motivated me to go like, yeah, you have to reflect on your life, especially at 30. So the line goes like this. Likewise, enduring every day of an unillustrious life, time carries us, but a moment always comes when we have to carry it. We live on the future, tomorrow, later on, when you have made your way, you will understand when you are old enough. Such irrelevancies are wonderful, for after all, it's a matter of dying. Yet a day comes when a man notices or says that he is 30. Thus he asserts his youth. But simultaneously he situates himself in relation to time. He takes his place in it. He admits that he stands at a certain point on a curve that he acknowledges having to travel to its end. He belongs to time 
and by the horror that seizes him, he recognizes his worst enemy, tomorrow. He was longing for tomorrow, whereas everything in him ought to reject it. That revolt of the flesh is the absurd. And that is life. Life is absurd. Life is irrational. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. There's no set truth. There's just a multitude of truths that you have to discover and find for yourself and that you have to use to motivate you to find a purpose, to find a meaning, to find a reason to get up in the morning and to keep pushing towards the mark. And in the myth of Sisyphus, Camus talks about the legend of Sisyphus, which is a man who is punished by the gods and forced to push this boulder up this mountain every day for eternity, only to watch the boulder roll back down and then for him to have to climb back down and roll it back up again. And we might look at that story and go, that's horrible because it's monotonous, it's meaningless. He just has to keep doing the same thing over and over again for eternity. And what kind of existence is that? And how can anyone find meaning or purpose in that? But Camus says that as he's walking down the mountain, he gets to reflect on the progress and the work and the grit and the determination it takes to constantly have to rebuild and to push back up to the top. And a lot of us have to do that in our lives. We build businesses, we build relationships, we work and strive towards very specific things only to watch them crumble and fall before us or we don't succeed the way that we think we should or we want to but we keep going and we keep pressing and we keep pushing and then eventually the work itself is something that fills us and that makes us happy and that we enjoy because we're actually striving towards something and sometimes getting to the top that's actually the worst thing that can happen because then you don't know what to do with yourself and that's where you see a lot of people become self-destructive and, and fall apart because they've worked so hard to get to a point and then they don't know what to do with themselves when they get there. So if you find yourself struggling and striving and pushing and working and maybe you don't feel like you're where you want to be or where you should be, just keep doing it. Just keep putting in the work, keep putting in the effort. You can find joy simply by being and experiencing. We push off tomorrow. We're always looking at tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna get there. Instead of going, look at how far I've come today. Look at where I'm at today. I have friends, I have family, I have experiences. I get to enjoy going outside, breathing in the fresh air, enjoying the sun hitting my body, the wind blowing around me. I have these senses and I have these things that other people would be jealous of if that they've lost. And we all have something that other people don't have. And we have to be able to appreciate all those little nuances and those little things that give our life purpose and meaning and enjoyment. Life is a symphony. It is a masterpiece of this weird juxtaposition of contradictions and, you know, light and darkness and pain and pleasure. And, and that is life. And we need those things. We need those, those elements to be able to qualify our experiences and to give them meaning. If everything was just a utopia and just perfect, we would be bored and we would have nothing to do. And I think it would drive us insane because we need those forces acting on us to keep us moving and to keep us engaged and active. And so when you find yourself in the depths or when you find yourself in your lowest point, just know that these are all the tools that are being used on you that you can use and that you can collect to push yourself towards the height and to keep yourself happy and to find meaning and purpose. As Camus finishes the book, he has this famous line where he states, the struggle towards the height is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. And we need to think that for ourselves, that the world can feel mundane, it can feel repetitive. We go to work, we sit in the car, we drive to work, we're sitting in an office, we do this day in, day out for years and years and years. So the mundanity of, of life exists with us, not just in the story of Sisyphus, but we need to be able to find meaning and joy and purpose in our own patterns and in our own way of living. And that is something that I'm trying to look at for myself. And so this past year has been another year of reflection, of introspection, of looking at my own life and where I wanna go with things. This is really it. This is what I wanna do. I wanna to try to keep creating content for you guys. Before I go, I'm gonna say one, one of the most interesting stories that I've had so far happen in this past year, and it was working at the gym. I was training a prospective client. We were on the mat stretching, doing some work, and all of a sudden there's this, <laughs> this shadow 
comes out of the side, this uh, big looming shadow, and this deep voice goes, so which six feet of distance are you using? And at the time, we had the COVID rules, so we had to separate by six feet. So we had little uh, plaques put up on the stretching mat saying, you know, six feet distance, got to stay six feet apart. And at first I thought the guy was asking, like, you know, saying, hey, you're not six feet away from your client. And so, but then I look over and I, I see it's John Cena. He's standing there and I go, and I know he normally stretches. He does like a yoga kind of, or like does like a splits and stuff. And he's trying to stretch like the hips and all this sort of thing. And I go, oh, hey, sorry. So I, I push ourselves down, my, my client and myself, we go down to the end of it, the, the mats and give him some space. And I finish up the session and she leaves. And, and I look over at him and I go, hey man, like, thank you for telling me about that. Thank you for letting me know I was being kind of selfish. I was taking up all this space and uh, I I don't want to do that. Like, thanks. Just, you know, I, you were very polite about that. And he goes, oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. You know, um, he's like, I know you have a hard job right now, having to socially distance and having to like clean up after everything. And I, I do appreciate all the work you guys are doing. And I go, well, thank you. I, you know, that's, that's really great. I hope you have a great workout and I'll see you later. And so we just had a little bit of like a little back and forth, nothing too crazy. And um, so I leave and I go downstairs and I'm talking to another, uh, another person in the gym. And then I see, uh, I see him, I see John walking and just kind of slowly and he comes down the stairs and he walks right up to me and he goes, I don't know you, but empathy is something that not a lot of people have in this world and you've got it. And I'm pretty sure that whatever you want to accomplish in life, you'll be very successful at. And with that, he basically walks out. Um, he was living, uh, he's living across the street there somewhere. And he just kind of walked out the gym and, and left. And I'm standing there going, did I just get a pep talk from John Cena? And uh, that day was a long day and I was pretty tired. But after that pep talk, all of a sudden my energy, it's amazing how something can turn your day around, right? And my energy was just through the roof. And I remember I went and did a workout and the, uh, the next day he comes back up, he's coming up the stairs and I'm like, Hey man, he goes, Hey boss, how's it going? And, and I go like, thanks. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for that little speech you gave me. Cause it really helped to motivate me. Cause that day was a tiring day. And he looks at me, he goes, you know what? No, I really appreciate what you said to me. Uh, I really like those kind words. And yeah, it just blew my mind. I'm like, who would have thought like that something like that could happen? And it's those little kind of serendipitous moments that happen in life. You know, it's so, it's so easy to always look at the negative and to look at like, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not successful. I'm not blah, 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 blah. But then when you have moments like that, or, or I had a client who, uh, who told me that he, he's staying in Vancouver. Like we were training, we're training like five days a week. And he goes, you know what? I'm actually, I wanted to leave. I wanted to go to LA. I wanted to get away from Vancouver. But the main reason why I've been staying here is because I want to train with you. He's like, my wife's here. And, and I, that's not even a reason for me to stay. I, I'd rather just be staying because I want to do the personal training. Otherwise I'd be, I'd be out. I'd be out in another country. And I thought that was kind of crazy. Um, I had another client, same thing. He goes, I've had a number of personal trainers and I feel like I got like maybe a master's degree with them or like a, a bachelor's degree with them, but I'm getting a PhD with you. And I was like, well, that's great testimonial, but those little things. And it's those interactions and those words that you have to think about and you have to go, this is what life is about. These moments are super meaningful. That's what we need to reflect on is these, these positive interactions, not the negative things or the things that we think that we deserve that we don't have quite have yet. But that's what my goal is for the next year is to just grow, develop, to keep delving into my philosophy, my history, my literature, making myself the best trainer I can be, making the best YouTube videos I can for all of you, and just keep on living. And that's what I want for all of you. That's what I want uh, for you to do today is to go out there, live your best life, find your meaning, find your purpose, uh, find the thing that motivates you to get up in the morning and to struggle against the mark, to push towards the height. I hope that in the next year, in the next years, you'll join me on my own journey and give me some good feedback and some constructive criticism so that I can improve. And I'd love to be able to help you improve as well. Let's all improve together and let's all make this world 
a better place to live in. Thank you so much again for watching. Hopefully this wasn't too long-winded. And as always, I can't wait to talk to you in the next one. David out.